Hello and welcome to Witness. I'm Raghi Omar. It's an all too common occurrence in Iraq today. A man is kidnapped, then the kidnappers release a video with his face blindfolded. But in the case of one man, nothing, just silence. No demands, no word about his fate for more than two years. Nothing. That is what happened to Eban Elias, an Iraqi born American. We know he set off for Iraq shortly after the US invasion in March 2003 to help rebuild his homeland. We also know that on the day he was taken hostage, he was en route to meet a friend. Other than that, it appears he just vanished. Tens of thousands of Iraqis have been kidnapped since the US invaded. Some are freed, but most sadly are killed. Since May 2003, 268 foreigners have been kidnapped just in Baghdad. Of these, 135 were released, 3 escaped, 3 were rescued, and 44 were killed. The fate of 81 hostages remains unknown. We wanted to find out what happened to Aban Elias. So Al Jazeera's Josh Rushing investigated. You might recognize Josh. He spent 14 years in the US Marine Corps and was featured in the documentary about Al Jazeera called Control Room. Here's what he discovered. traveling northwest of Baghdad. Uh, he was supposed to be at a certain location at a certain time. People eventually checked on him. They found he wasn't there. I was kidnapped. A few days later, the video was released in that he appealed to uh, the Muslim community to uh, assist him in getting out. I call upon the Muslim Association. The evidence basically ceased at that point. May 3rd, 2004, Baghdad, Aban Elias vanished. Elias is one of tens of thousands of Iraqis and one of the dozens of Americans who have gone missing in Iraq. We looked into all the leads and the leads soon dried up, uh, what is the long and the short of it. There, there just isn't a lot on his uh, case to, uh, to draw upon. I'm a civil engineer working in here in Baghdad. The last clue appeared on this video, released May 6, 2004, by a group calling itself the Islamic Rage Brigade. It's not normal. So it's always been a, a pretty mysterious case. This man works for the U.S. government, finding Americans held hostage abroad. He has worked extensively in Baghdad, including on the case of Aban Elias. He would only speak with us if we agreed to conceal his identity. There just isn't a lot on his case to uh, to draw upon. This is a story about how Aban Elias first went missing. Is there any indication he was targeted because they knew he was American? And then how he seemed to vanish. For now over two years we know he, as if he vanished off the planet. Aban Elias has not been treated as a hero back in the United States like many other American hostages. They're wonderful people. Are you, Some think they know why. Are you saying that you think Aban Elias hasn't received much attention in the United States in his case because possibly he's, he's a Muslim and he's an Arab? Yeah, they say, well, uh, the Arab kidnapped an Arab, let them, uh, uh, let them uh, do their own thing. We wanted to find out what happened to Aban Elias, who he is, and why he wanted to go to And for that, we went to Denver, Colorado to meet his brother. Kazwan Elias, like Aban's younger brother, has been reluctant to talk to the media, fearing the publicity could harm Aban. This is his first ever extended television interview. I mean, he's missing and I don't know nothing about it. Maybe there's somebody out there who knows a little more than what I do, which I don't know. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just, I'm just saying whatever it's goes in, in my mind and I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. I just hope it's, it will trigger somebody's heart. I mean, I, I hope the people who took him just, just really release him because he's, he's just a regular guy. Right. Aban Elias grew up in a neighborhood near Baghdad. When he was a teenager, his family moved to the U.S., so Aban caused one of their siblings to go to school here. They eventually settled in Colorado. 
This is like in 85, 1985. We came to visit him, and this is like Colorado mountains in here, my dad and me. Wow. I looked a little different there. Yeah. Now photographs <laughs> are only flashbacks yeah, of a normal he's, life he's, gone by. He's the, the handsome in the family, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. The handsome one. The handsome one. The brothers That's excelled in the United States, wife, and then he came both back, earning yeah. U.S. citizenship and completing advanced degrees in engineering. He looks but they so never forgot their roots pictures, back in Iraq. Yeah, this is all him. Aban and Kazwan returned He's to the Mideast just... for traditional weddings to uh, Arab wives. This is when he got married in Jordan. He got married to his wife, and then he came back here. Ah, he looks different there. Yeah. Abba and Elias embraced life in the United States. Abba would be a guy who would become a senator or something, you know. I mean, Abba, if he lived another five years, I, I would really believe that he would have done something great for, the, for American people. Abba witnessed the bombing of Baghdad, and he believed returning to to help rebuild the country was a way of aiding the U.S. reconstruction effort and of helping his native nation. He wanted to build the country, just like the American government first stated that they want to build Iraq. I mean, he went because of that reason. He wanted to build the roads. He wanted, he's a civil engineer. Engineering is, is, is to build the country, and that's, he, he wanted to put his spirit, his work, all into building the, the, the country he was born in. Aban's mother also returned to Iraq. They were in Iraq together for about eight months. Despite the violence and confusion that swirled around them, Aban focused on his business and stayed out of politics. He didn't have problem with Shias, he didn't have problem with Sunnis, and he, he was like a moderate kind of Muslim. I mean, he, he really didn't have, he wasn't living that life. He, he never Tonight grew up to hate anybody. Aban's mother had come back to the U.S. for a visit. When on a fateful day in May 2004, everything changed for the Elias family. Aban went to meet a friend, a meeting to which Aban Elias never arrived. I was kidnapped. The Elias family had no idea Aban had been kidnapped until, like everyone else, they saw it on television. It was tough, Josh. I mean, it's, I, I had, it was, I don't know what to tell you. It's kind of hard to express it with, with with words, you, I just got hit with, you know, seeing your brother blindfolded and he's all terrified. And my mom is, is right there, she's, I mean, we were blacked out. I, you know, it was just tough on us, just looking at my brother like that. It's... Adding to the family's shock was something that Aban said on the tape. Any chance when he got over there, he started working with the military? No. Since he's Iraqi? He can blend a little more. He would have said so, no. That's saying Aban wasn't in a. The U.S. government also the, denied uh, Aban's statement in an official letter sent to the family. Which just says our records indicate that Aban M. Elias is an American freelance engineer in Iraq. There is no evidence that he was a contractor for the Department of Defense. Has there been any concern or has anyone looked into the possibility that maybe he wasn't abducted? that maybe there's something else going there's, on here? There's no uh, indication in my uh, knowledge of this case that there's anything other than a hostage taking. No other facts to my knowledge that, that would lead us any other direction. Uh, there was also no direction coming from the kidnappers. Enough. That was May and, of 2004. Uh, then nothing. No demands, no video of Aban being killed, just nothing. Feeling helpless in the United States, Aban's mother flew back to Baghdad, alone in a desperate quest to find her eldest son. And back and forth to Baghdad four or five times, asking all kind of tribes. She goes to Fallujah, she goes to mosques, she goes with my uncle everywhere. She Until some of the tribal the leaders gave Aban's mother a stark warning. The, the last thing they, they told her, don't keep on looking for him because you're gonna get hurt too. You, you, they might kill you too. They told her, just don't, don't look for him anymore. Okay, saying all that, I mean, I don't know. Days turn into weeks. Yeah, you're talking about it. Weeks into months. Is that the hardest part right now? Yeah, that's the very hard part. It's just not, not knowing what's happening to him. You know, it's, it's really tough. It's, 
I mean, if, if, if he's dead, then we know that, that will really relax us a little bit, at least to know that he's dead somewhere and so we can go get his body and maybe bury him. What has the United States done to help the Elias family? Has it forgotten Aban Elias? If so, is it because he's Muslim or Arab American? That part of the story when we return.